Our systemic capillaries are specialized blood vessels whose function is to exchange and allow the movement of nutrients and waste products between the tissue side and the blood plasma side of our capillaries. Now, things like water molecules, proteins, gases, nutrients, and waste products, hormones, and electrolytes, all these things dissolved in their blood plasma must be able to move across the wall of our capillary. The question is, how does this movement actually take place? Well, recall that our capillary wall is very, very thin. In fact, it's so thin that it only consists of a single endothelial layer. And between the endothelial cells of our capillary wall, we have very tiny junctions, very tiny slits. And these slits and junctions act as pores and allow the movement of the fluid, the blood plasma, along with the molecules dissolved inside the blood plasma across the wall of the capillary. Now, because of the limited size of these pores, we basically prevent the movement of larger things such as red blood cells across the wall of the capillary. So we see that the wall of the capillary is in fact a semi-permeable membrane. So now we know how this movement actually takes place. It takes place through these tiny pores and holes we call junctions and slits that exist between our endothelial cells of the capillary wall. Now, the next question is, what causes this movement of blood plasma across the wall of the capillary and in what direction does this fluid actually move? Does it move out of the capillary or into our capillary or does it move in both directions? So to answer this question, we have to discuss the pressure that exists between the inside of the capillary and the outside, the tissue side of the capillary because ultimately it's a difference in pressure that allows the movement of our fluid from point A to point B. And the two types of pressures we have discussed are hydrostatic pressure as well as osmotic pressure. So let's begin with hydrostatic pressure. So as our blood plasma, as our fluid moves along our blood vessel, along the capillary, that fluid exerts a force and it pushes against the walls of the capillary. And this is what we call the hydrostatic pressure. Hydro simply means water because our blood plasma is predominantly water and static simply means we have these forces. So hydrostatic means the force as a result of that fluid that moves along our uh, capillary system. Now let's take a look at the following diagram that describes our blood vessel. So these are the cells, the endothelial cells of our capillary and this is the capillary. These are the junctions, the slits that, <clears throat> uh, found in between our endothelial cells and this is where the movement actually takes place. Now, we know that capillaries actually connect our arterioles to our venules. So this is the arterial side of the capillary and this is the venule side of the capillary. Now, recall in our discussion on the circulation system, we said that it's the heart that actually creates the hydrostatic pressure and it allows the movement of fluid of blood plasma inside our blood vessels. And because the arterial end of the capillary is closer to the heart than the venual end of the capillary, what that means is the arterial end of the capillary will have a greater hydrostatic pressure than the venual side. So the hydrostatic pressure that is exerted on the walls of the capillary on the arterial end is about 41.3 millimeters of mercury, but on the venule end, it's about 21.3 mmHg, and we'll see what that means in just a moment. Now, let's move on to the osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure, also known as, as oncotic pressure, and we'll see why in just a moment, is the pressure that exists between the two sides of a semi-permeable membrane 
as a result of a difference in solute concentration between the two sides of that semi-permeable membrane. In this case, our semi-permeable membrane is the wall of the capillary. So if we examine the following diagram, we see that inside our capillary, the blood plasma actually contains a higher concentration of solute molecules. It contains more proteins, it contains more ions and so forth. And as a result, it has a greater uh, concentration of solute. Now recall that water always naturally moves from a lower solute concentration to a higher solute concentration. Water always moves from a high osmotic potential to a low osmotic potential. And because a greater solute concentration means a lower osmotic potential, water will always move from the tissue side to the blood plasma side of our capillary. So in the same exact way that objects always travel from a higher gravitational potential to a lower gravitational potential, water will always move from a higher osmotic potential in the tissue to a lower osmotic potential inside our blood vessel. And that's why water moves along this direction into our capillary. So, due to the high level of proteins, ions, and other solute molecules in the blood, the blood plasma has a greater solute concentration than the tissue of the membrane, and that means it has a lower osmotic potential. Therefore, water will move from the tissue and into the blood plasma from a high to a low osmotic potential in the same way that objects move from a higher to a lower gravitational potential. Now, because inside the blood plasma, the relative concentration of these solute molecules remains the same, that means the osmotic pressure along the entire capillary will also remain the same. It will be equal to about 28 millimeters of mercury. So it's the same here as it is the same on the other side, the venule side of our capillary. Now, the question is, how exactly do these two different pressures influence the movement of our blood plasma across the wall of the capillary? Well, to find the net pressure and the net fluid flow, we have to basically add up these two different pressures. So let's begin on the arterial end of the capillary. We know that the hydrostatic pressure points outward, but the osmotic pressure points inward. So they point in opposite directions. And that means to find the net pressure, we have to add these two values up. So the P hydrostatic minus the P osmotic. So we choose this to be the positive pressure and this to be the negative pressure. And so 41.3 mmHg minus 28 mmHg gives us positive 13.3 mmHg. The fact that this is positive basically means that the net fluid flow on the arterial end of the capillary will be out of that capillary and into the tissues of our body. And so this is where the nutrients, for example, the glucose and oxygen will flow into the tissues of our body. Now, what about the venule side? Well, we follow the same exact procedure, but now notice the hydrostatic pressure is less. In fact, because it's less than the osmotic pressure, when we take the sum, we get negative 6.7 millimeters of mercury. Now, what that basically means is because it's negative, there will be a net fluid flow of our blood plasma into the capillaries from the tissue. And this is when the waste products, for example, ammonia and carbon dioxide, will flow into the blood plasma. And then they will ultimately travel to the kidneys and other organs of our body that are responsible for excreting those different types of wasteful byproducts. Now, because we have a difference in pressure, because the pressure that pushes into the tissue on the arterial side is greater than the pressure that pushes 
onto our uh, inward into the capillary we see that there's going to be a net loss of fluid to the tissues in fact there is a net loss of about 10 percent of the fluid that exists that takes place and that extra fluid the 10 percent of the fluid that leaves our capillaries enters our lymphatic system and the lymphatic system ultimately returns that fluid to our blood circulating throughout our circulation system and we'll talk much more about what the lymphatic system is in a future lecture. So we see that the, the, the exchange in our fluid between the wall of the capillary takes place due to these junctions and slits between the endothelial cells. Now the reason it takes place, the reason we have a net fluid flow is because of a difference in pressure. On the arterial side, we have a greater hydrostatic pressure than osmotic pressure. And so we have a net movement of out of the capillary into our tissue. But on the venule side, the opposite is true. The hydrostatic pressure is less than osmotic pressure. And so there is a net movement of fluid from the tissue and into the capillaries of our body.